This podcast is brought to you by Infinite Resources, a local staffing agency connecting diverse job candidates and central Iowa companies. And we're back. We have with us today my really good friend, Kathleen Serino, uh, which happens to be a cheese connoisseur, um, a barely new friend, but it feels like we've been friends forever. Yes. Um, she also happens to be the mom of a cute five-year-old <laughs> named Miss Trudy, which happens to be also one of the most fun human beings I have ever met. Oh, thanks. Um, so I thought that because it's the end of the year and a little bit before Christmas, we could talk about cheese and have some wine and just have a fun podcast. And she can tell us all about cheese and how to put a cheeseburger together. Thanks, Laura. Welcome. <laughs> Thank you so much. It's so exciting to be here and talk about something I know a lot about. I see how you do. Yeah. All right. So tell us about your job title and how do you get into cheese? Yes. So what I do is I actually work in the grocery industry. And I work for a company called Murray's Cheese. They are a New York-based company, but we actually have cheese shops all across the country in 35 states now. And I work on the team that helps open cheese shops across the country, Mm -hmm. but also maintain the cheese shops. So training the cheesemongers that work in those stores. So my title is Manager of Training and Curriculum for the Murray's national program because we have our our new york cheese shops right our business is okay. in new york city yes but this is our separate national business which operates sort of independently of of the new york business so Murray's is like the cheese shop here like luckily because you guys make you guys don't make the cheeses or do you make the cheeses so it's interesting because there are some cheeses that we make their our recipe from start to finish and we you know contract with um dairies in the in the east for example i'm thinking of one in the northeast um that helps make our cheese for us and age our cheese for us um so we we do have cheeses that we make um we also age cheeses as well so perhaps we um age very young cheeses made by other cheesemakers. So they send them to Murray's when they're very young or in their green, you know, baby state, like not fully ripened cheese yet. And we age them in our caves. We have aging caves as well. So we, yes, we make cheese. Yes, we age cheese. But we also have, you know, brick and mortar flagship cheese shops in New York. So the one, you know, the main one that opened is in New York City in Bleecker Street in the village. And uh, we do a lot of different things. Um, but we also were able to merge with Kroger. Um, mm, so the I love Kroger. <laughs> yes, the grocery <laughs> retailer, the big one. <laughs> and that's how we're able to have a thou- over 1,000 cheese. I think we're at, a, I think we're at last I heard was 1175, but I could be wrong wow. on that. We're over 1,100 cheese shops across the country now. Okay, so cheese mm-hmm. caves is like like those caves you go when you go to like a fancy winery and they take you down similar you know, like that yeah oh, because wow. you need because cheese needs like an environment to ripen like it in aged cheese right mm-hmm. if we're not you know you could be making fresh cheese right like ricotta for example mm-hmm. or something very fresh and young when it's that fresh it does not need an environment to ripen further right it's pretty much ready to go as soon yeah. as it's made you eat it mm-hmm. you eat it um, but cheeses like these, which I'm actually going to open some of them Go now. Go for it. Start. Um, it'll be fun if you hear some background noise in the... Yeah, <laughs> some AS, What's it called? ASMR? ASMR. Yes, ASMR? exactly. Um, but uh, there's aged cheeses out there in the world, which need some time to ripen. They need some time to mature. They're not perfectly delicious right as soon as the wheels are formed, and they need a little bit more time. So we, you know, and a lot of... A lot of, um, there's a lot of aging facilities out there in the world, but in Murray's, we have four different caves that are set to very different temperatures and humidity. None of the cheeses that we're tasting today are aged in the Murray's caves. (laughs) Um, These are just other cheeses that I wanted to bring. Um, Very humble cheeses. (laughs) Um, But hopefully we can learn about cheese today and you'll all feel really excited about your cheese shopping journeys when you're shopping for the holidays. This is a great time of year to be eating cheese. Yeah. What do you get? This three cheeses that we're going to taste. So these are actually um, from the grocery store. 
Okay, which yeah. grocery store? Yeah, you're um, so it locally because we do not have Kroger in in where we are in Des Moines, in Des Moines, Iowa. Um, mm-hmm. We got these from Hy-Vee, so okay. these were able That's to. Great. But I I think that the reason why I thought about this, um, about tasting these cheeses, they're pre-packed cheeses, right? They're okay. cheeses that you can just go to most of your local grocery stores wherever you're shopping, and hopefully they have a. A selection, a selection of cheese yeah. that you can feel a little bit more confident in, you know, getting excited Just about. Fine. Yeah. Um, and these are from there. So we have three cheeses. We have a fresh li- or a lightly aged double cream brie. So okay. domestically Lube. produced. We have an aged traditional Gouda from the Netherlands. And then we have a Danish blue cheese. Mm. So they're all made with cow's milk. We have some fig, some fig jam as well. Mm-hmm. Um, so they're all aged with cow's milk, and they're all really fun to put out, eat. You can make you can make them into something else. You can you know use them for seasoning, all of that fun stuff. But I forget where we were going with the caves. <laughs> uh, well, because that's what you do. Uh, but let's go back to okay. So all Moray's is in New York. So when you lived in New York, is that how you started to get yeah. into cheese? No. So no? I had a restaurant and hospitality background, and um, I used to live in Iowa before I curr- where I currently live. We moved back to Iowa. Mm-hmm. And I um, – these are really spicy, by the way. Be careful. Okay. These are not from Hy-Vee. These are special. What are those <laughs> things? These are something new that we're going to be selling in our cheese shops oh. coming soon. They look like peas and chickpea, though. Our cheese shops in Kroger. <laughs> okay. Um, they're mozza- They're kind of like mozzarella. Oh. They're like a smoked. Well, they're they're similar to mozzarella, but they're okay. a little bit different. But anyway, um, I had a cheese background. I was working for, maybe you're familiar with New Pioneer. For our Iowa listeners, they might know New Pioneer. Food co-op in Iowa City and Coralville and Cedar Rapids. So I got a job working for specialty, the specialties department. So it was like beer, wine, and cheese. And I was like, oh, God, this department is amazing. Like, there's nowhere else I'd rather work. That Like, you can buy cheese or order cheese, cut cheese, serve cheese, sample cheese. And then you get to also, you know, stock the beer case and, like, talk to people about beer and wine. It was really fun. Cool. So I had that background and I just fell in love with cheese after that. Like I had been working in a restaurant and um, one of my culinary mentors who I'm going to send him this link when this podcast is done so he can listen to it and laugh. You should have. Um, I just watched all of these amazing foods that he was making at the restaurant where we work and my now husband used to work. And I was always so impressed with everything that, you know, it was very French inspired. So there was a lot of, you know delicious creamy cheese sauces and there was this really cool book called the cheese lovers companion that sat in the window pass between where the kitchen was and where we would grab the plates to go serve and we would just look at that book every once in a while and read about cheese and I was like I had no idea that the world of cheese could be so was so amazing and interesting and different and exciting and then we my husband and I ended up moving to New York for to help a friend open his restaurant and before the restaurant was opened I got a job um, working at a cheese counter for another another company, mm. and I was just working at that cheese counter for a couple years, and it was cheese counter just like serving cheese, just selling cheese, cutting, <laughs> oh, uh, yeah, cutting cheese to order. Um, it was in Manhattan, so it was very busy oh. cheese shop, and um, a lot of really good Italian cheeses, and I just learned so much about cheese and. Ended up becoming the cheesemonger at this restaurant that we opened. Yeah, so (laughs) that we helped open. That's awesome. Yeah, so that was really kind of like my cheese background. And I had Trudy, who's five now. Five now. And I, as soon as we had her, I was like, man, I was like, I think I need to get another job. (laughs) I was like, I can't. That wasn't the restaurant. Yeah, I was like, this is hard to be a parent and, you know, do this life. Right. And I would take the seven train home. To, I, we lived in Queens. I'd take the seven train home every day. And I saw on the train, because it's above ground, um, once you get out of the city into Queens, there was this beautiful bu- building being built in Long Island City. You know, just like lots of sprawl going on and lots of big high rises getting built in Long Island City. And there was at the bottom floor of this building that I could see had like Murray's paper covering the windows. And I was like, Ooh. oh my God. 
Murray's is going to open a cheese shop you know right by my cheese. house. <laughs> yeah. Yes. And I was like, maybe I should like go see what kind of work I can get over at Murray's. Because I thought they were opening a, just a regular, another cheese shop there. And I had okay. no idea how big Murray's was. I had no idea about the, the cheese shops that we had in Kroger. I was like, Murray's dumb at that time. Right. Just anything else. Yeah. I was like, maybe I could see if I could get something. And I applied and the, the HR person that hooked me up was like we have actually this position that's in training would you be interested in interviewing for it and I was like I have no idea like what that means, what that means. <laughs> I was like you know sure why not <laughs> and so I met my she's still my boss today oh my god that's awesome yeah um like almost five years later I'm not quite at five years there but almost there yeah the rest is history man she she's wow. taught me a lot and my team is awesome and I love that yeah love that yeah was it was it like hard you know from changing from like the restaurant and be oh yeah small to like so just hard. do this job nowadays to sit at a computer like and yeah yeah because my job is no longer talking to customers about um cheese right and yeah. selling cheese by the way i'm cutting this yes. aged gouda here so laura you should try yes. this one um it. and it is very hard so if you have like an, a really hard cheese that's kind of like, you know, bothering you and it's not cutting like perfect, beautiful cuts, just cut it in like right. chunks. <laughs> it doesn't have to be like perfect. It does not have to be perfect. It can right. be rustic. It does that's it too. okay. Um, so yeah. Wow, that's really good. Strong, strong mm. Gouda. I love one year age. One year aged. So mm. aged in a cave, a temperature mm. and humidity controlled environment for like at least a year. Wow. And then even longer considering like how long it takes some wheels to come from from the overseas. Place that they come. Yeah, the supply chain, all of that. Mm. It could be even longer, but wow. really dense and fudgy. I love it. Yeah. Kind of like caramel so a little good. bit. Yeah, a little bit. Mm-hmm. Not feel strong at all. Good. I'm glad you don't think it's strong. Some people mm. can I be kind of like ah. and I love strong cheese as well, so yeah, so tell me, so... But Brie is definitely my favorite cheese. Brie is your favorite. Okay, I was just about to ask, what is your favorite yeah. texture? This looks creamy. Anything creamy, I guess. Yes. This is a double... Ooh, yes. Perfect. This is yeah. a really, really nicely ripened um, Brie. Okay, so I was also, like, doing my homework, and you sent me a couple of um, articles mm -hmm. about cheese. Mm -hmm. um, but as you've been quoted in some of this, and one was really interesting. Well, they were all really interesting, <laughs> but, like, one was, like... Do you eat the rind of the cheese or not? Mm -hmm. That one was very interesting. Very interesting Do question. you eat it or not? It depends on the cheese. Okay. Yeah. So ch all cheese has a different sort of like rind, like an outer. Some cheeses don't even have rinds, right? Right, right, right. right. And you can consider the rind as almost like the jacket. Right? Of uh -huh. the cheese that kind of holds all of its insides together. <laughs> okay. Or protects it from potentially, you know, harmful environments, right? Like bad bacteria or, you know, uh, I don't know, light, too much light, right? Oh, you know, okay. that can change the flavor and um, quality of the cheese. And so the rind is really there to protect the cheese. A lot of times the rind can be there for like beautiful aesthetic purposes too. Okay. Um, like the ones that look waxy. So, yeah. So um, think about red wax Gouda, right? Yes. So, yes. Okay. There you go. There you so go. So that's actually like a protective coating that's painted on the cheese. You don't eat that. You can you can eat it. You can uh -huh. consume it because actually if it is sold in the United States as food, yeah, it has to be completely edible. Oh. So we could not sell it in our country if it were not le like legally edible. So edible. The, the wax, you could eat the wax. Think about Manchego, actually. The the, the outside dark yes. part of the Manchego yeah. is actually wax a lot of times. Sometimes you can but find, like, really natural good. rinded Manchego. But, yes, <laughs> I think a lot of that. But it doesn't, because Manchego, the way that it's cut it, I don't even think about it. I yeah. just eat it. That's a perfect example of a cheese whose rind that I have no problem eating. Right. Red wax Gouda, I, it's very easy I for me to peel off the wax. Actually, the, the Gouda yes. that we have in front of us oh, okay. has this waxy. Oh, Right. Now you take off. You can just peel it off. Right. Yeah. But you could also eat it. I mean, you <laughs> won't digest it, but yeah, you could actually like chew it and okay. swallow it. 
Okay. But the I think think about like your brie. Like that. So we have this like yes. little small format. It's a small uh, double cream brie. So it's right. like the perfect size for like a party. Right. Um, I don't think brie is as delicious without eating the rind. I no. think it's like so much better with the rind because it adds that earthy flavor that you you get this buttery kind of grassy. It's like mm. almost like grassy butter in the center of the cheese, but the outside is really what where mm-hmm. that exciting flavor can come from a lot in a lot of brie. I do have noticed that a lot of people take it off. Yeah, uh, and or that's they just okay. like kind of like spoon it out, mm-hmm. and that's okay, which is fine. Sometimes they just want that in their cracker or their bread. Yeah, we and always say sad. in Murray's, cheese your own adventure. Mm. So if you don't, like, nobody's going to judge you or tell you you're doing it wrong. Like, I don't think there's... It's not like that wine world where everybody does feel very stuffy and yeah. judgy. The rules, right? Right. I don't think cheese is as stuffy or judge judgmental. I think it's a very kind of just have fun and eat it. And if you like it, great. But I think you'll. I think the, the rind, the people that don't like rind... Will prob would probably find a soft cheese out there with a rind that they do find pleasurable, mm-hmm. but the trick is to kind of ask your local cheesemonger, right? Like mm-hmm. maybe there's a cheese shop near you where you like to go, or maybe there's a grocery store that has a great cheese counter, and you can just ask the person working there what you you know what they recommend and tell them what. What you if like. somebody goes to Trader Joe's? Because honestly, yeah. Trader Joe's has some amazing cheese. They do. It's very affordable. Mm-hmm. You can. Throw a whole like charcuterie party, you know, under a hundred dollars. Mm-hmm. But they're not very good at answering questions because they're busy all the time. True. So, is there like a place on the internet that someone can go and like yeah. Google that stuff off? Well, I think like an easy thing to do if you're just shopping f- by yourself and you're shopping like a pre-packed case, which is exactly what you're describing. It's not like a place that has bulk cheese and a cheese counter right. where there's somebody like actively cutting cheese yes. for for sale for their case um and you can just kind of pick up the cheese touch the cheese um i don't know check the sell by dates you can look at the ingredients mm. list if you if you're a label if you're a person that looks at labels. labels and i think like the best way to make a nice cheese plate maybe which is what you're mm-hmm. kind of describing um is to get cheeses that vary in a couple different things. I think texture, varying che- textures and cheese are a really kind of fun way to make variety on your cheese plate. Okay. Like a hard, we have on our cheese plate here a hard cheese, the, the aged Gouda, which is a hard cheese, mm-hmm. a soft cheese, ripened, yes, a soft cheese, which is this brie. And then we also have a blue cheese, which is, yes, it is also soft, but it might surprise you in its texture it's very different than the brie it's a little bit wetter and Mm. Mm -hmm. it's different so i think that's one one thing you can look at is is something item select like find things that are varying in texture you can also find things that are varying in milk type so Mm. there's four main milks that we see in our cheeses that we consume in our country primarily cows uh, for cheese cow's Mm -hmm. milk cheese sheep's milk cheese goat's milk cheese and you also might get really lucky and see water buffalo milk cheese, which is very exciting and delicious. Water buffalo will be like a what? A mozzarella? Yeah. Like a really yeah. fresh mozzarella. Mozzarella, um, ricotta, you know, fresh. Mm. Or you can find like aged water buffalo milk cheeses. Um, and you might want to go to like a bigger city that might have access to a lot more. Right. Um, but you might find like a, a blue cheese made with water buffalo milk. Oh, you know, wow. you, it's a very versatile milk type and it's very exciting to find that. But you can also find cheeses that are a blend of those milks, which is another thing that's fun. So wow. so looking for varying milk types are really fun. And then looking at varying styles, right? So everyone classifies cheese differently, right? There's like stinky right. cheese, not stinky <laughs> cheese for right. some people. Yes. Or there's, um, har- you know, hard cheese and soft cheese. There's imported cheese and domestic cheese you know there's all these different ways to categorize things um and i think one fun way to put variety on your plate is to find cheeses from different countries Mm -hmm. because that can make it really fun too right yeah i agree yeah so you trust your judgment right like when you're shopping at your prepack store and you're like i don't know what to pick but i know i want cheese um if you're lucky enough to find someone walking by that works there i would try to bend their ear for a minute and ask them like what do you love like what should I not miss 
I mean, I also just realized right now that, like, I mean, really, if you want to start trying cheese, a good place will be the cheese shop. Because, yeah. first of all, you can try stuff. They're so nice. Oh, yes. They're so, so very nice. So very lovely. Yes. Um, They're always open to answer your questions and they give are. you taste. Yeah. But you also, you can take home, like, a little cheese board. Yes, they so the cheese shop you know, of like Des Moines yes. you're talking about, yes. which is an amazing, yes. amazing um, local cheese local shop. cheese business that and we they have, have a restaurant as well. Yes, but yeah, because as soon as I just went there, and I usually know what I want, and this really? time she really wanted to try mortadella. She's never had, oh. she's never had mortadella. Yeah, they have Italian um, mortadella there. Yes, yeah, so good. Ooh, I love mortadella. So so good. Um, and we just went and got a cheese board for the two of us. Yeah. And we're like, the only thing that we know is that we want mortadella. We like everything. Yeah. And I was like, okay, let's do a cheese board for two. Yeah. And voila, that was it. But also we had cheese for like to share the next day. Oh, yeah. You can eat cheese as a whole meal if you really. You know, like that's all we ate all yeah. day. Yeah. You know, we also got a baguette from Lamy, but like. Oh, yeah. That's like, a perfect were, meal, and though. And I was like, and it wasn't. I mean, it was pretty affordable. I mean, it was like a thing that I was like, yes, it was like a fancy treat, mm -hmm. obviously, for the holidays, but it wasn't crazy. For someone that wants to try a little bit and doesn't want to buy a huge block of cheese. Yeah, right. Because equally at Trader Joe's, you can wrap up the money really oh, fast. sure. Because so, you know, weight or where it comes sure. from, um, it can be very pricey. So maybe yeah. the cheese bar is a good, the cheese shop. The cheese shop is a great, good. I think there's a lot of, People have a lot of um, like apprehension when it comes to cheese because they don't know how to pronounce it, right? It's smelly. It feels weird. It's sticky. It looks crazy. Like this blue, cheese, blue cheese is very blue. Um, and I think that um, that's part of the reason why you want to try in small amounts mm -hmm. is to get a good um, introduction to something, right. right? You don't want to invest your whole half your wallet, your paycheck in, yeah. you know, don't buy two. Don't go out and buy two pounds of cheese. <laughs> yeah, no, 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 no. You no. can always ask, like, if you have a cut and wrap store near you that can cut cheese from a whole mm -hmm. wheel. You could probably very easily ask them to. Cu could you cut this in half for me? Um, because or can I have a taste of this before you go and right. jump in and purchase it? Because we don't want you to come home with something that you don't like. No, no cheese monger wants that. Yes. <laughs> yeah, it'll feel terrible. They want to find you something that you like. It's blue cheese, the most hated cheese. Yes. <laughs> I knew it. <laughs> There's this Sardinia. Is it Sardinian? There's an Italian, I think it's from Sardinia, uh, cheese called Kazu Marzu. Mm -hmm. That's like infamous for being like this cheese that is. <laughs> Tell me um, all about it basically oh, like fermented to the point where maggots ah. like thrive inside the cheese. Is that and a blue cheese? Is, no, but I think it has the vibes of a blue cheese. I've never tried it. I've only like, you know, Will heard you tale it? of it. I would try it if I had enough delicious wine like what we have today. Like um, after you drink around like two us, bottles. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. By yourself. Um, but it has a very strong taste and it is, it's one of those like prized delicacies in the region, but it is a straight up cheese with maggots in it. But, but like so many Man. people treasure it for being this like supreme kind of delicacy. That's like, Oh, you've never had anything like this, but I mean, we do drink mezcal with a worm with the worm in it. Yeah. And we also eat crickets. Crickets. Yeah. And they're delicious. Yeah. So Maybe. Yeah. Well, I can until you try it. I guess. I guess if cheese is like, I'm sorry, no, like dairy is like to me is like that's maybe when I like draw the line. Yeah. With bugs. Yeah. yeah yes, yeah. absolutely. And um, it is interesting. Like if you ask a cheesemonger, like they would may they may or may not bring up Kazu Marzu as being one of those cheeses that's like I will never try it. Um, but most people, like the 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 people of the world that don't think about cheese all the time, that are just like, hey, I need cheese. It's the holidays. Would probably, cheese. Cheese. <laughs> yeah. would probably say blue cheese. Would probably say blue cheese is being like, I will never have blue cheese. But actually, Let's try it. when I went home to my family for Thanksgiving. Where's I your brought, family from? They live in the suburbs of Chicago. Is that where you grew up? 
Um, I went to high school there. I actually mm. grew up, grew up in Orlando, Florida. When I was, you told me yeah, that for ten years, yeah, I, think I lived there. But uh, you know, they're very classic. Um, I don't know, Irish Catholic, you know, suburban Catholic school, you know, church going people. And I was like, oh man, I'm gonna bring these cheeses. They're gonna be like really knock their socks off either in a good way or a bad way we'll see how they take it and they loved them they were like awesome they ate them so fast i was like okay so now i know that i can bring home whatever and you guys will try it this is so good it's pretty creamy I mean, this blue cheese i like blue cheese but I've, i don't think i've ever had anything like it so danish blue is pretty mild for blue it has a lot of blue veins mm -hmm. in it so i think it like intimidates yeah. a lot of people um but it's, it's beautiful Kind of salty, very tangy. It's a very like blue cheese dressing, blue cheese. Like very kind of like a little bit sour, right? Like I'm smelling it and it smells almost like sour, salty milk kind of. But then you take a bite of it. I'm just going <laughs> to lick the top of my Where? cracker. <laughs> I just like to taste the cheese, but mm. it's pretty mellow. It's pretty sweet, actually. It's so good. It is. Mm -hmm. it, it like tickles the sides of your tongue a little bit it's kind of like a little bit acidic wow. but then it finishes like a really clean milky taste yeah it's like no like weird after taste even like blue cheese dressing can give you like a little bit of a weird thing after yeah because blue cheese dressing it has a i think most blue cheeses have that kind of fermented taste and like you really want to have a palate that can that can tolerate that mm -hmm. and you like and if that's not something that you do like but you want to try it, then we have like a really nice fig jam in front of us today. But like a honey and blue cheese is oh really yeah. good. Chocolate and blue cheese is amazing. Never had it so good. Like with this, like a like a, a dark chocolate or a medium kind of dark chocolate would be huh. pretty nice with this. So I never think about like pairings. Like mm -hmm. I'm pretty good at eating just cheese. Yeah. Or like even do meats. Yeah. But like pairings like you have your fig jam right mm -hmm. like you have your issues like grapes mm -hmm. everybody with grapes great with cheese grapes right shout out to my grapes uh, out there pears mm -hmm. we'll put pears like what's another like so chocolate with blue cheese will pair well mm -hmm. what are other pears that people don't think about um i like um let me think about this really depends on what you're eating but like with a fresh cheese, so like something that's white, like in a container or just out of like a plastic kind of like a goat log or um, a mozzarella or something like that. I love that with like pickled vegetables, but they're like preserved in oil. So you can go like a lot of Italian grocery sections have like okay. jardinera in oil or um, you How know, do you peppers say in, in oil. English? I, well, I think the Italians call it jardinera or... It's Jardinero. called sotolio, which translates okay. to under oil in okay. in Italian. So there's a way that you can preserve the, the vegetables and then you basically drown them in olive oil to like let them last for the a long best time. Of the best. Yes. Yeah. So you can have some like yeah. later in the winter when you you know, it's just a way of cool. preserving. But I love like preserved pickled vegetables in any mm. form, any way okay. with cheese. I think that's really good. There's a cheese called Gruyere. Do you yes. maybe you know Gruyere? Uh, wonderful, wonderful Swiss um, alpine cheese that's like, a, it's a mountain cheese. It's just like a big, giant wheel of cheese. Yes. And it like, it, it, it it's made in the mountains and it has to kind of withstand a lot of elements, you know, from the point where it's made, from the point where the milk's coming from to the point where it's made and so on. Um, and this cheese happens to just be like one of the most amazing cheeses to cook with, right? Like it's, it reminds me of Parmigiano Reggiano in a way, Parmesan, like, yes. cause you can grate it, you can melt it, you can do all these amazing Whatever. things with it. I love it with kimchi. Oh. Yeah. What? Yeah. I love kimchi. <laughs> so like if you're into Gruyere, if you, I'm sure a lot of listeners are like, oh yeah, Gruyere, I know this. There's a lot of other Alpine cheeses, right? Of like France and Switzerland and even Italy that have that very similar kind of meaty taste or even like Taleggio, if you're familiar with Taleggio mm -hmm. cheese, it's a soft um, cheese from Italy, but it's, it's a washed rind cheese. It's washed in like a brine solution. Um, so it's kind of orange on the outside and it has a very like stinky feet smell truthfully, uh -huh. but it tastes very like sourdough bread. Like it's so good. It's salty. It's creamy. It's, 
They should have some of the cheese shop. Come like, does it come like kind of like mozzarella looking? It's in. Or is it dry? It's in like a square, like a almost like a paver tile is what it looks like, and it's about I don't know two three inches mm. tall. Okay. Um, washed drying cheeses in general. It's one. It's another way of classifying, right? Like you have your 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 brie style cheeses is almost like its own classification, and then you have this other classification that's known as washed drying. And those cheeses kind of vary the spectrum of texture. They can be hard. Okay. They can be soft. They can be pretty much made anywhere. Our country makes a lot of fantastic wash rind cheeses. Like one of them I brought home to my family for Thanksgiving, mm-hmm. I was telling you. And they mm-hmm. freaked out over it. They loved it so much. And I was like, oh, That's my God. Awesome. I didn't think you were going to like this. Um, and they're very kind of salty, meaty. And they're mm. so good with like pickles, cured meats. Okay. And kimchi happens to be yeah. just like a really good pairing with like wash stinky wash dry cheeses. I can't wait to try that with the kids. Oh yeah, I so good. I never about it, but the kids also love kimchi. Oh yeah. They love cheese. Does Trudy like cheese? Trudy says she doesn't like cheese because I'm always talking about cheese and I always <laughs> have like stuff going on with cheese, like a cheese conference or like you, a thing. So she's you like, leave oh. her to go talk about cheese or so she's like, no, thank you. Please. I try, like I've, but but so I will say, she says she doesn't like cheese, mm-hmm. but she takes down a lot of cheese, <laughs> like, and we're like the family with like you know cheese sticks in the fridge, and she loves American cheese. She loves pasteurized processed cheese. That's like her jam. Yeah, shout out to all the Amen. S- <laughs> singles lovers out there <laughs> yes. that just have to have like a single slice of American cheese because I, I love that, that too. I can eat that anymore, but I would just play to a few girlfriends on Sunday. I don't even know how we started talking about gross things that we used to eat. And I was like, literally just grab like a a cold hot dog from the fridge. Yeah. And then wrap it up in the middle. And then I'll put ketchup and mustard and then wrap it up on like good old craft cheese. And eat it cold. Oh, hell yeah. Damn. I would probably at one point in my life have eaten that, but minus the mustard. I mean, there's like some things that I'm like, I don't even know how I'm still alive. I've been eating <laughs> that for so long. Yeah, I and ate a lot. Of course, I will chug a glass of milk right after. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know, just like. Most kids in our country, but. I think, love hot dogs, milk, <laughs> craft Singles, <laughs> cheese sticks. Like, I still love hot dogs, though. Not cold, but I still love hot dogs. I love hot dogs, too. Hot dogs is probably like my, up there in my top Meat three. in tube yeah. form. Yeah, yeah. But I love. really well made. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I love sausage. Right. I love it. Yeah, I love it too. Just things. Um, going back to like the kids, like it's like Bella. Like Bella's not now eighteen, but when she was little, she was like, "I don't like cheese." Yeah, but she would love mac and cheese. Mm-hmm. That's her favorite meal. That's I think. Yeah, you know, it's like such. They a don't thing. realize a what thing. cheese means. Or she didn't want pepperoni pizza, and she will take all the pepperonis out. But if you will order her cheese pizza, she will be upset. Mm-hmm. Because she just wanted the little grease and spicy from the pepperonis. <laughs> that sounds like Trudy. <laughs> it's like so all yeah. of those things you gotta figure it out. We've called Trudy out enough and had but like she has so much good language now that we can have mm-hmm. conversations where I think she slowly has like accepted cheese and she will try she's awesome. Like she'll try anything. If you if you can if she's she really does. And she's mostly in the mood, but she'll try anything and she'll she will either say she likes it or she she's not into it, but she might even try it again and find that she likes it. And like I've done That's like awesome. nights where I, because I work in cheese, I end up with m- massive amounts of cheese in the cheese. fridge, whether I want it or not. I it's know, suddenly bring it there. Over. Yes, now I know. And A lot of um, I will like have all these odds and ends, right? Like these random pieces of cheese in the fridge, and I'm like, we got to eat these. Like we're having cheese for dinner tonight. And I will put out everything and like take out all my jars of condiments because I have, you know, you so many in the yeah, fridge. Little things, and yeah. everything had a little place and everything was on the uh, like little, by the way, cheese boards, che- like a, bla- a dinner plate, whatever you have at home, I think is fine for cheese service. Yeah. Like whatever you have. Actually, I wanted to say this on the podcast so everyone knew your <laughs> trick. But I went to uh, Laura's house. Their family was having this lovely like dinner and they had a cheese table set out when you walk in and it was on parchment paper it was oh, just I like did that i forgot yeah a sheet yes, of parchment paper yeah and you had all these cheeses out and like everything like everything just had like a little pile of nuts and a little container of jam and like i just like brought a piece of cheese and i <laughs> slapped the wheel on yeah. the table i was like done <laughs> i always do that because i love that our friends have a lot of kids yeah like everybody has like kids like little kids yeah you know, or big kids like 
right now, like 12 year olds. And it just feels more accessible. I feel like it feels more accessible mm -hmm. to kids to like come and try and grab than like having all of this little like fancy boards or whatever. I loved the, what you did. Um, I was like, that's brilliant. And then it's just like, you know, I wait to start and get everybody from everybody away from the kitchen mm -hmm. so we can finish mm -hmm. cooking mm -hmm. and then everybody can come to the kitchen mm -hmm. and like start grabbing food. Yeah, but I think I started that when like little people would come to our house. Yeah. And I wanted them to also be able to grab and enjoy. Try things yeah. Yeah, and yeah. pick the thing that they wanted. Yes, yes. Which is why Trudy really liked the little cheese plate of like tiny cuts of cheese and all yes. these little random things yes. I put out. And it was a way to clean out my oh, cheese drawer, that. but also she was super able to, you know, she was excited about it because she was able to pick and choose what she wanted. And she ended and up trying some crazy stuff. Like awesome. I was like, I'm surprised you like that cheese. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. I love that. But pairings wise, I really think like honey is always a good thing to have around. Yes. Um, yes. I always forget about honey. Hopefully you have a, a good friend in wine. <laughs> that can make good recommendations for cheese or you have a, a wine person that you can talk to about that. There's a that. few places that are very, yeah, also very welcoming. Yeah. That are not snobby. Mm -hmm. And, you know, cause I think wine, like that's a thing where like it feels a little bit like intimidating. Yeah. Um, to pair a good wine. Yeah. Um, you can also have it with beer though. Beer. Heck yeah. Cider, tea, you know? um, tea and honey is great. Yeah. Because there's like a oh. sometimes some bitterness in like a tea that. What's a good tea? Like like I like um, herbal teas. Like I like yes. herbal kind of caffeine free teas is what I go for. But um, I found like I don't know like lemon balm or oh. mint tea can be kind of nice. Okay. And like it really depends on what you're eating, but um. There's a lot of cheeses. They're they're in this category, this classification called natural rinded cheese, and those cheeses have sort of crazy rinds. So we were talking about rinds earlier mm -hmm. and how we don't eat rinds. Yeah, these are ones that are part of the cheese and have basically developed a crust over time. Right? It's not wax. Mm. It's nothing. It's not cheesecloth. It's nothing fake. It just has naturally developed over time in sort of like a natural kind of cave-like environment and sometimes you see like wild colors of colorful molds kind of kind grow of on the outside of them it. like a okay, little okay. bit of speck of yellow and a lot of gray and a little bit of white and I actually love eating those rinds because I think they're so exciting and weird and like they're have sweet. a little yeah. bit of bitterness in them which go oh. really nice with um herbal tea like a good tea or a good tea like oh. even like a green yeah. tea I bet you could find something that you're like hmm so yeah there's Huh. Sky's the limit. I think it's you just sky's the limit. It's a whole other world. Right? It doesn't have to be like wine, mm -hmm. you know, or this like fancy pairing. Mm -hmm. Like cheese should be like just something. I mean, if you like it, you know, that you want to try and like put together. Mm -hmm. It's a very holiday-ish thing. One of my favorite pairings, now this reminded me, is from a friend of mine. We've joked about this. And he is a cheese buyer for a very famous cheese shop in Paris. Oh, fancy. He loves eating cheese with watery vegetables is how he described it. And I... What are like watery like vegetables? Like a radish oh. or a celery <gasps> or a carrot or endive. Something really crunchy and kind of like if you cooked it, it would shrink down into like a little tiny speck. I could like that. Oh, man. It's my favorite. Like blue cheese and radish. I love all those vegetables, so yeah. like especially radish. And sometimes, like, it can be kind of rich to eat so many different cheeses. Like, you're kind of like, oh, mm -hmm. um, and you need to take a break. Yeah, these are good, right? These They're are kind of so good, smoky. The the variety the the style of cheese this is made after is called scamorza. So Laura's tasting the 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 fit the little balls that I told her oh, were geez. like mozzarella. What is it? Let me read it. <coughs> Oh, the, they're called cheese bits. Matzo mini. Cute. Try this one, though, the little green one. Okay, so we spicy. should try them at the same time. Yeah, do that. Why Mexican? I love spicy. Speaking of radish, <laughs> horseradish. This is like a wasabi flavor. Oh, my <laughs> Her God. Her face just lit up. Because <laughs> it hits you later. It's a wasabi. It's a wasabi feeling that happens. But it's also smoked, too. Wait, I get to take this home, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Yes, you do. <laughs> they're just so good. Yeah, they're fun, right? Fun. And these like don't really like turn milky. Okay, but like, how will you serve this? Like, yeah. So, so this is this are gonna be able to be sell at stores or some stores. You'll I be guess, able to get right? these in our our cheese shops in the beginning of the year, I think. Okay. Cool. Or no, they should actually be out there well, all, you, all right like, now. These ones are like the kids will love this. Oh yeah. Absolutely love this, but like, how will you serve these ones? That are like literally do taste like you're eating wasabi. Yeah, I. Um, but it's juicy and melty in your mouth. Yeah, it's crazy. They're fun. I think like on a skewer, if you're making like a fun little, like, like one, two, skewered three. thing of like different flavors, you could do like a pepper and a little oh, fun. ball of mozzarella and so, you know something like that or like a cheese cube whatever like a plain a very yeah. creamy plain cheese so someone i know puts these in her <laughs> martinis because she doesn't like olives but she wanted like a little garnish who doesn't like olives crazy people man i like, love olives i absolutely with love blue olives. cheese like stuffed into it yes my kids don't like olives really no oh wow i think that's the only thing the True. three of them they don't like olives. I know a three-year-old that inhales like, them. Yeah, yeah, because they're so salty, and yeah. kids love salt. Especially the more like expensive, yeah. fancy ones. Like that's her again. That's like her thing. Um, that's yeah. Trudy, <laughs> That'll be my dream kid. And then they come to a certain age, and they suddenly decide they don't like it anymore. Yeah, like yeah, yeah, Trudy, yeah. and yeah. she's over olives. And I'm like sad because I'm like, you're really missing out today. Here, try it with this one. I was thinking. Hey. Poured. I report it. We have a Riesling here that I thought looked really good, but I'm like thinking about what it would be best with. Mm. And I was thinking the blue cheese it would probably taste really good with. It would be great. Well, all of them, but the wines are excellent, by the way. Thank you. Thank you. Shout out to my brothers. <laughs> Shout out to the brothers. To tell us what to get. I went to buy them. <laughs> yes, and thank you. Yeah, no, thank you. Um, do you travel a lot with your job? Like uh, four times a year, maybe. Do you get to go to like cool places? Um, it's. I mean, New York is cool, so I was like, yes, That's I fine. have to go to New York. Um, I think I'm going back soon. But I have. It's like a different place every time, actually. So mm. that's kind of fun. It's always in the country. I haven't left the country yet for work, but um, I'm because we have so many stores in so many different states. Mm -hmm. There's like always a need to go somewhere that, you know, oh, has to, you have to kind of go there. You have to figure out this thing. You have to do this training, whatever. And it's usually always a different place. So I'm like very infrequently at the same place more than once. Do you miss New York? Um, I really do. Yeah. I don't miss like there's a lot of unsustainable things about New York that I don't miss, like the cost of living. Right. Which is part of the reason why we had to leave. We left during 2020 the summer. COVID, yeah. right. Mm -hmm. But I'm like super grateful. Like my company's amazing. They were, they. S you could do remote. Yeah. It was, I mean, and my whole team, like we work in all these different sort of states anyway. Like we've always had this like remote thing going on with mm -hmm. the work that we like do. Like other people that were So not it even just somehow country. worked. That's awesome. But I do really miss like the. <laughs> Being able to go out at 12 right. o'clock at night and get Korean fried chicken or like, you right. know, order from basically anywhere or um, there's all kinds of amazing service, like social services that are just yeah. available in a big city that sometimes are harder to find in, the, in smaller cities. So I miss like that. And I miss like the lights and the right. decorations. Walking everywhere. Walk. I miss walking. walking I really miss everywhere. walking. When you walk in here... People are like, what's wrong with her? Yeah. Like, why are they walking? Like, the yeah. car broke down? Yeah. Or something like that. It's always so weird. Also, it's like, feels like there's so much diversity. Yeah. Everywhere, I've everywhere you go in New York. Very diverse. Yeah. I miss the people. That's very refreshing. Oh, yeah. I miss the people for sure. And I lived in a, it was such an interesting, so the Borough of Queens, I have read, maybe this is different now is like one of the most diverse counties in the country, if not the world, because of it's like a melting pot type of mm -hmm. very working class borough with all kinds of people living there. And like my neighborhood where I lived, it was so interesting. It was like really represented by all mm. kind of cultures. But like interestingly enough, it was it seemed mostly like to my 
immediate eye, it was like either mostly very Irish and very Bengali, like lots of people from <laughs> Bangladesh and Ireland, just everywhere all the time. I love that. And then we were there, and it was funny. I just took a zoo for the first time, or, or it's my first time ever in New York, and yeah, equally a zoo in February of this year. Um, and I've never spoke more Spanish. Nice. Oh yeah. I mean, I spoke a lot of Spanish on a trip to Miami, but like I was so highly surprised. Yeah. And like the month of people that were like you know our, from our uber driver to like oh yeah you know the guy in the restaurant and everybody's like so it, or the guy at the bodega mm -hmm. like where are you from yeah. you know and like all these things that were like end up being more a trip it was supposed to be like a fashion trip you know for my fashion girl and end up being more like a connect with your roots trip oh yeah kind of thing um when you guys were working at the restaurant, you guys to got to leave the country to do, like, trips mm -hmm. for the restaurant, right? Mm -hmm. We went on one. Uh-huh. And then, so that's where you learn all about cheese or, like, it's just to go get ideas or something? Research and development oh. and bonding. Cool. Mm -hmm. Where did you guys go? Well, we didn't I mean, I a Spanish-speaking country. <laughs> well, we did. Actually, I'm lying. We went to Spain briefly. Oh. Um, we went to Sp we We flew to Spain. And we drove to France and northern Italy and wow. then back to Spain. This is before Trudy. Before Trudy. <laughs> before being a mom. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I, we, we talk actually about where we will want to take Trudy. Yeah. I definitely want to take her to a Spanish-speaking country. Yeah, you'll probably lo she'll probably love that. Oh, for sure. Yeah. I, I Like, we have a list. It's, 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 like, it's like, probably the most okay. realistic, I think, is like, Mexico, because it's like we could uh, probably drive and make that happen yeah, and do we that go together. Yeah, um, but also Japan. I think she'd really like. Japan. Oh my god, the kids are dying. They want to go. Japan. That's like, yeah, mine is Cuba. Oh, that would Let's be like amazing. Uh, legal documentation, but okay, like it's it's. So wait, Japan. how would you wait? That's interesting. I don't know. It's like so. I had an ESL teacher. Mm -hmm. Um, you know. English as a second language yep. when I was in high school. And she was so fun. She was so interesting. And she, like, literally just, you know, it's like, I went to Cuba. And we're like, how do you get to Cuba? She's like, yeah. oh, I went to Mexico. And then, like, you know, did this and did this. And then she's like, I'm, she's on my friend's Facebook. Yeah. <laughs> and she's been to Cuba so many times after that. So now that's like, you're so like, I'm going to go there. there. It's like, there's a way. Yeah. I mean, I'm here. There is a way. Oh, yeah. <laughs> For a lot of things. But I always find it very interesting. But, no, I want to go home first, obviously. Yes. And then Guatemala is after that. Okay, yeah. Um, For obvious reasons. Yeah, for obvious reasons. Um, yeah, and then do other places that. But, yeah, my kids are definitely Japan. Yeah. Europe is at the end of my list. Europe used mm -hmm. to be at the first of my list when mm -hmm. I was, like, a teenager and I dreamed about Paris and mm -hmm. stuff like that and now like 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 for real I believe that Oaxaca in the next couple years is gonna take down Paris it already is the way that tourism is damn it's such a f beautiful I've never been mm -hmm. I've never been and I've been here for 20 years mm -hmm. but it's already like people it's there's already tours there's already like like just craziness like the next place that people are going to go it's going to be Oaxaca before it's Paris so yeah. like I cannot be the person that goes to Paris first before goes back home and yeah and he goes back to the country and sees like all these beautiful little places oh so yeah definitely dying to go to Oaxaca for sure yeah I think too just because of my work like being in the restaurant industry and like the food service industry I have often found myself working shoulder to shoulder with Spanish speakers and most of them are Mexican. That's like the same in the wine industry. Really? Yes. Yes. When I went to Napa, uh, and nothing fancy, I just went to Napa because my brother used to live in Napa uh, because he was, you know, um, in wine and in the wine industry, but then you would go to all these fancy wineries. Yeah. And everybody working in the back or even picking up oh, grapes yeah. from picking up grapes to bottling oh, yeah. wine picking for sure to being the harvest um, 
everything. It was it was equally the same. They were all they were all Mexican. They were under contract and they would go back home in the winter or whenever it was in harvest season. But it was mm-hmm. like it was just the same in the kitchens. But it was like I was just like, because oh, it's supposed to be such a fancy world, and it was just still all run by. Well, the worst. But I, f- to speak from personal experience working with Mexicans, the finesse and the speed in which the Mexican people that I've worked with have worked, I'm like, I could learn a thing or two because, like, you just did things that I could only dream of doing, like, at the level and right. with, like, the technique. And I agree. Like, in kitchens, in in service with people, like, customer mm-hmm. service, like, in a restaurant, for example. And then, like, actually, one of my very good friends from New York who I still do keep in touch with is from Puebla. Mm-hmm. Oh, awesome. And was one of the first... He was the first person that I introduced Trudy to when she was born to my um, to your baby. Yeah, to my baby. That's awesome. But he, w- I worked with him at this the Italian cheese shop that I told you about, mm-hmm. and his job all day was to slice prosciutto de Parma, and they legs and legs and legs and legs just slice. And he was so fast, and he would slice like the most beautiful, thin, perfect slices, and it's just like eating like. Mm. ribbons of it was like velvet on yes. your mouth when you try it yes mortadella My, all of that uh, stuff mouth just water like i've never had this thing where no he still says it once in a while but like i've never didn't graduate from high school he ended up getting his ged later on but in everybody that it was in the staffing industry used to have all these big degrees sure. right and he did it i love he that he just ran into get some but this is now you know, how he makes a living. Um, like he used to say as like as an immigrant, and I said, an immigrant kid, he'd be like, you might have all those diplomas, but you can never outwork me. You will never outwork me because that I do have. Mm-hmm. You know, and this is when I first met him. And then after that, it just became like our, my motto because it's true. Like there is absolutely nothing I wouldn't do in the world for my family, for my kids, for my friends. Like, yeah. You can have all the titles, but you're never going to work as hard as me. Not as me. Because I will give it my all. And, yeah, we just started rolling with that. And it's just like all of our people Mm -hmm. are like that. It's a good mantra to have. Honestly, like I feel like Evan and I don't even work as much as like 90% of like our immigrant, you know, Mm. brothers and sisters. But it's like very different like things. So you definitely work... I clearly, like, you struck me as someone who's very involved in her community. Your husband, Thank too. You. And your children, too. Really is. And you. I think that is a lot of, it's like you're working and not realizing it. Like, everything you do is towards the greater good of your your happiness, your neighbor's happiness in the community For around sure. you. And that is so special because, like, my grandfather, I always, he was, like, a doctor. And I was always like, Grandpa, how is work? And he's like, work. I never worked a day in my life. Mm, like, that's kind that. of what yes. you remind me of. It's yes. like, I never, I've never worked a day yes. in my life. It's just, like, what I do. That's definitely Amner Martinez. Yeah, well. he's amazing. Yeah. yeah, that's that's him. Yeah. And you'll get to Cuba one day. I'm going to oh help you. Oh, my God. <laughs> yes. I'm going to I'll be to the Mexico <laughs> here within the next year. Like, that's where my... That's where my brain is. That's where my whole being. Got to go back and to I know your roots. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna get back when it's time to get back, mm-hmm. and I'm in no rush. And I live here, but I my but heart, your heart is, is, there. is there, and it's fine. But it's fine because what I have created here, it's you know, I wouldn't have the kids if I wouldn't be here. I wouldn't know people like you. You know, I wouldn't mm-hmm. know. We wouldn't be recording this, and we're going to be talking about fancy wine. I'm like, I'm, <laughs> I'm a poor kid from Mexico that I'm and I went on our first date 15 years ago to Luca. Yeah. And the first course was cheese. Oh, do you remember what you had? Uh, we didn't eat it. Oh. Because it was like one random blue cheese that looked just like dangerous. Like, <laughs> it looked like we didn't eat it, and it felt so funny. Like, we just both loved He <clears> wanted <throat> to take me to Luca so bad. Oh. So it was like... Saturday night, and they were playing jazz, and we sat by the window, and we didn't eat the cheese, and we laughed the entire night that we couldn't eat the cheese, because we didn't even know what it was. Yeah, yeah, and they didn't tell you. No. Ugh. 15 years later, like, I sit Damn. down in my kitchen counter with him, and then just grab cheese from the fridge and eat it with him. Yeah, yeah. 
Oh. Blue so cheese like, is scary to start with in the beginning. I don't blame you for not I wanting to eat it. Cannot believe that I look. I think I was also trying to be just like a really nice date. You know, yeah, I'd eat like weird stuff. Tensions were running high. You were nervous. Now he will eat four tacos. I'll eat five. So oh damn, you know, it's kind of like nice. It's fun. <laughs> now everything is fun, but I love that. Thank you for coming. Oh, thanks for having me, Laura. Uh, you're kind of like the best addition that happened to 2023 for oh, me and for us and the family and the family. I love that. The feelings mutual. Hey, and I don't say that lightly, you know, because when husbands meet, like oh, you our know, husbands partners, like each other. Like I mean, I knew my husband loved your partner. But because they were childhood friends, they were childhood friends yeah. exactly. So when that happens, it's also like doesn't like oh, mm-hmm. the wife's never like. But you were from the beginning. It yeah, was people, completely different. People meet Travis, and either they like him. Or he is an abrasive personality. He'll be the first person I to say Travis. that. Well, and most people who can see through like attitude can like see through that. But um, yeah, no, he usually people like that are friends with him meet me, and they're like like me better <laughs> <laughs> i can see that i can see that i still like travis but i'm gonna talk about it talk about you guys forever and trudy forever mm-hmm. but yeah you guys are definitely the best addition that we got in Aww. 2023 we love you guys we love amner too he's the oh, best he is he's he really knocking is. at our door the other morning <laughs> did he tell you this to get a sweater yeah to get the sweater which because i saw that picture on instagram i was like oh he's wearing like i was like travis has that sweater travis said and he then could borrow it. later in the day i found that travis lent it to him i was like yeah i thought that was so cute because it's like sisterhood of the traveling I, pants i shared clothes with my friends yeah so that's one of like the big things with like the girls that are like my fashion friends whatever yeah it's always like why would you buy something if you can just come to my closet and oh, vice versa yes. right so we do have a few things that Hello. we just keep passing around. I love that. And I was like, I'm going to go borrow a sweater from Travis. Yes. And I was like, that is so cute. I was like, stop it. That is not cute. I'm like, that is so cute. It is so cute. <laughs> and and like, Travis, and his attitude was the same way. He's like, he's like, he was so Andrew proud. was like, can I borrow this? And I was like, yeah. <laughs> but there's very few people that he's ever done this with. And those people are his closest friends. So. No. no, I love that for them. Yeah. I love that for Amner, honestly. To be able to reconnect with him and oh hell yeah Perry dudes yeah they're very people I love them well thank you for coming thank you for having um, me um this was awesome of course maybe we can link a couple of cheeses we'll take a few pictures and I'll send them to Courtney and then we can see yeah I'll just link give you like high B. really ba- or really basic like yeah this is like the idea. type of cheese that you need to ask um, for all the articles that you sent me were great so we'll link those in oh. the in the bio they were so great Thank and you, you recorded all of them that was so cute too yeah. i love it i, I love seeing that fun times yeah being interviewed awesome. about cheese yeah you can put my Look. email if people have cheese questions oh. do You're that so kind. that'll be awesome yeah okay we can do that thank you Kathleen. thank you laura merry christmas merry christmas everyone. thank you guys merry christmas last episode of the year Woo-hoo. see you next year <laughs>